welcome to Solid Lake Lifestyle. My name is Olivia and I'm a lifelong ballerina and classical musician here to teach you how to dance ballet for free with no experience needed. Let's go ahead and get our dancing gear on and get started. Hello and welcome. Just a quick note that if you are a new student here for the very first time, I recommend that you check out my playlist above because each video in this free ballet course builds off of concepts learned in previous videos and I wouldn't want for you to feel lost. Now if you're a returning student, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and get into today's lesson. So for today's video, we're going to go over some more advanced pantomime motions in ballet. Our first one for being Let's Dance. Um, this is seen a lot in ballets, especially like in the Nutcracker where Clara calls her friends to dance, as well as in Giselle when there's the dancing scene um, in the festival, and plenty of other ballets have this pantomime in them. So I think it's something that's really good to um, think about, especially if you're going to see classical ballet. So to signify that a character wants to dance or is calling other um, characters in the ballet to dance, what they'll do is typically like bring their arms out like this, and then circle it above their head, and then open up, okay? So like, let's say like if a character is trying to call their friends to dance, they'll go like this and they'll call, maybe to both sides they'll call, and then they'll signify that they want to dance, okay? So next up is a really interesting concept that I would like to show you, which is when certain ballet pantomimes kind of are outside of the norm for typical ballet motions. I think a great example would be pantomiming specifically for a doll-like character. So I think as you've probably gathered from watching these videos thus far, is that ballet is very fluid in motion and that the arms are meant to be very graceful. However, there are certain characters and times in ballet where you kind of break the mold in that aspect. One of those being usually a doll-like character. So for example, for a doll in ballet, Typically, it would be signified by having your arms up like this. This is often seen in the ballet of the Nutcracker where there are dolls at the party scene of the beginning of the Nutcracker. And also in other ballets like Pelia where uh, the different characters go into the workshop of the person who makes a bunch of different dolls. So again, a pantomime to show that you're a doll will typically have the character starting off if it's like a wind-up doll, which because ballet is very common to have um, stories from back in like the 1800s, 1700s, so on and so forth. Typically the type of dolls that they had at the time were wind up dolls. So usually a doll would start off like this as if they are not yet wound up and then another character will come, pretend to turn a key in their back and they'll slowly start to pop up like this, okay? Kind of showing that they're being wound up and they're about to be in motion. And something that's very cute that is a, um, a doll specific pantomime and ballet is in the party scene in the Nutcracker where Clara is interacting with the dolls and the dolls will be doing their dance and they'll go ahead and blow kisses to Clara um, like this. Meanwhile, in ballet, if it was a regular character, they'd probably be more fluid in motion and blow a kiss like that. But it's funny because, you know, the characters are trying to be like dolls. They have to act very stiff and pretend that they are blowing kisses um, as if a, you know, a wind-up doll would. So I think that's a very interesting part of pantomime and ballet, um, and it shows how much thought goes in to portraying certain characters. So next up, we have the pantomime on how to make a promise or say that you're going to promise something or swear something. Usually a character will be looking at another character, and they'll go ahead and put their arm like next to their chest, and then look off into the distance with pointing their two fingers up like this. So they'll say like, you know, I promise to do this, or like, you know, I'll promise that I'll love you. Uh, so that's another way of how you can kind of connect um, different pantomimes together. And it's a pretty easy pantomime to remember. All you have to do is you know to put your hand up to your chest, put your, uh, your hand into this two finger kind of uh, motion, and then look off into the distance and kind of like you're really showing like, okay, I promise to, to do this for you or with you or something like that. Next up, for these more involved pantomimes, I have the pantomime to signify death. Uh, so this can be used if a character is dying or if they're trying to explain that someone has, you know, passed away. And usually what will happen is that the character will be 
looking away, they'll have their hands up in a fist, um, and then they'll signify by putting their hands down in like an X motion. So that means that the character, you know, another character has died, and usually the head is cast away. Next up, we have the pantomime to say that you are beautiful. I believe this is used in Small Night when Siegfried signifies to Odette that she is beautiful. And then I also believe that this is in the ballet The Nutcracker when the sugar plum fairy meets Clara and she tells her that she is beautiful. Um, I could be wrong there. <laughs> Feel free to do your own research, but if memory serves me correctly, those motions are used in those different ballets. So as for how to do this motion, it's a little bit more involved, but I think you'll be able to get it down pretty quickly. So typically the character will motion to the other character. They'll kind of point to them. They'll draw their arm up in a circling motion and look down almost like the um, traditionally female motion to sleep. Remember it was like this. So they're putting the hand out, kind of almost framing their cheek. Then turn your head and kind of move the arm above the head and then have it end up back in that same position of cradling your cheek, okay? Um, and that shows that the character is pointing to the other character and kind of like circling their face like, wow, you're so beautiful. So again, how you would do that is let's say we're like in a, um, a B plus, we have the other hand down, it's not really that involved. Pointing to the character saying, you are beautiful. And that is how you say you're beautiful in ballet pantomime. So now we have how to say I love you in ballet pantomime. Usually love, like we learned in a previous lesson, is just kind of putting your hands over your chest like this, but to say I love you is a little bit more involved. So typically the character will start off with their hand like this on their chest, okay? Then they'll circle the hand around and then look out like this, look down and then back up. Almost like, you know, when I show you in each video at the end, we do our reverence to each other. It's really like a deep meaning of, um, I would say like respect to the other character and showing that they feel deeply for them. So again, we're gonna start with our hand across our chest like this, kind of bring it up a little bit. So, if, you know, I'm saying I love you to this character. I'll start with like my hand here, bring it up a little bit, go like this, head down like in respect to them, and then back out, okay? And that is how to say I love you in ballet pantomime. And lastly, for today's video, we have how to do a marriage proposal or to say I want to marry you in ballet pantomime. So to do this, the character will have their arm stretched out in front of their body and they'll have the other arm free. The other arm will kind of circle around and point to the ring finger on the other hand. So kind of like saying like, I want to marry you and pointing to that ring finger. Uh, again, this is a very common ballet pantomime that is seen in different ballets such as Romeo and Juliet to show that one character is proposing to another character. For this lesson, I won't be doing a recap, but please feel free to go back and look at these different pantomimes and practice them yourself. This is my reference to you. Thank you so much for learning with me today. I'll go ahead and put down below what I'll be covering in the next video, which will be some more pantomime fun. Thank you again for joining me. If you could please like, subscribe, comment, turn on the notifications, all those good things, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.